Ahoy! New World has announced an upcoming event for the launch of New World Eternum and that is somewhat controversial, or very controversial, because there are quite a few weird things about this. Starting with this uh, icon here that kind of gives us an indication. This is Xbox, this is a PS and this is PC. And that is exactly uh, the first point of contention for people. So this new event uh, will start uh, with launch on October 15th, I think, and they will basically divide players in separate teams depending on what platform they're playing on. The rewards, however, depend on the platform as well. You get green items if you're on Xbox, you get blue items if you're on PlayStation, and you get red items if you're on PC. And that is, of course, already gonna bother people to some degree because not everyone prefers the color of their console and might want another color instead. So, yeah, some PC players maybe want blue, some Xbox players maybe want red, and so on. Uh, that is going to be so annoying. Also kind of funny in so far that green is m the Marauder color in game as well, so that makes it even more uh, confusing in terms of design. But anyways, uh, this will be a three-week-long event uh, with different challenges, um, and the challenges are team-wide, so they are like a similar thing to the previous event they had for the launch of i think it was brimstone or maybe even Legion of the wilds there's this like race going on where you had to do uh, challenges and could unlock special rewards if certain uh, breakpoints were met in this case uh, we're starting here in week one um, and the description here is the shipwreck was only a first step into the clutches of an island lost to time Navigate Eternum's strange inhabitants, hone your skills, and pursue perilous opportunities as you explore a vast, beautiful world. Every arrived challenge will be revealed at the start of week one. For example, complete an expedition. Depending on your team, you'll receive a forest green, river blue, or mountain red uh, upon the completion, blah, blah, blah. So this is the stuff for week one. The whole list is... Uh, the, this is a tool set skin with six pieces, two transmog tokens. This is going to be a way... Uh, to get a significant amount of transmog tokens this season. Don't think they'll repeat that in future seasons, but at least get a good head start here as a new player. You get a rapier skin, ice gauntlet skin, warhammer skin, bow skin, flail skin, 10 skin dies matching with the color of whatever uh, team thing you get going on, and a new void bent armor set, as well as a content creator giveaway that we'll uh, get to a little bit later for a great sword skin. So the void band set here i'm pretty sure is going to be a new set called the eternian explorers set uh, because if we look at where this is coming from this is coming from the three armor caches linked to the event on new world database this Eternian set is level 30 400 gear score heavy full con and comes with health as a perk as well as a gem socket so not bad to have that at that point, really. Uh, you can probably find something better, I'm assuming, but uh, yeah, it's like a why not kind of set. Anyways, that is from the first challenges. Uh, and as far as we can tell, these are like group challenges that uh, you can complete uh, with with your quote-unquote faction. I'm just going to call it faction, for, even though it's not an actual faction, but um, it doesn't seem like there's necessarily a requirement to participate at least significantly i don't know if you have to participate at all or if you just have an existing character uh, on the server and if your team completes it uh, that's enough but it doesn't seem like you're gonna have to significantly uh, put time into getting these rewards as far as i can tell uh, from the info we're getting here then in week two we uh, have some more tasks um this one it says, uh, for all the immortality it takes, it, uh, <clears throat> it gives, it continues to take. Discover your perfect combination of weapons, abilities, and skill trees to survive the island's environment, and then unearth some of Eternum's darkest secrets alongside your fellow adventurers. So what I'm thinking is this may be uh, reaching a certain weapon uh, skill, like, for example, reaching like Mastery 10 on, on weapons or something might be one of the challenges, as well as uh, quest progression that Eternum's darkest secrets... Uh, sounds like it anyways the item that we're getting here or the items rather is once again two transmog tokens a sword skin void gauntlet skin great egg skin blunderbuss skin a round shirt skin and captain's bed housing item and then the content creator one is the fire staff skin and again these are all skins unlike the uh void band set here everything else is unlocked as a skin 
uh, but I would not be confused by the colors here, so I think they're just showing off a different color for every week. But like, if you were an Xbox player, then this would probably be green. That said, because they are skins, uh, you can also just dye them in different colors, with one exception that we'll get to in just a second. That exception you can see right here, because this eye uh, thing, it's like the face, it's a helmet skin technically, but uh, that cannot be dyed properly. You can dye it, but the effect doesn't actually change, or at least with the previous version, it used to not be uh, possible to change it. Because there is a Twitch Club version with purple eyes, a very old one, and there is a, a red version from from Isabella, which weirdly this one doesn't look exactly like that. So I'm not sure if this uh, fire is actually going to look different from Isabella's one. But either way, uh, that's going to be in that particular week. And the glowing ice helm skin is generally cool, in my opinion. Doesn't look cool here, but uh, it's going to be really annoying that you can only get the color of your of your team because being marauder and having the green color from xbox is going to be so much better than all the other options so yeah uh, the rewards here are once again two transmog tokens and the hatchet skin life staff skin spear skin musket skin kite shield skin and the glowing ice helmet skin as well as a tower shield skin for the conduct creators uh, they say this time it's as we piece together the lore on each bad omen uh, might be referring to reading lore notes uh, you'll better understand the uh, traveled history of the Eternal Isle, Kafia, Destiny, and Thwart, the Corrupted, before they drift uh, beyond its shores. So that's those challenges. And then for the content creator codes, they say, um, turn into your favorite content creators uh, each week for exclusive Trials of Eternum event weapon skin code giveaways. So I'm not sure if they actually mean that or if it's just bad wording, because I would think that it's likely just a Twitch drop rather than a code giveaway, unless they are giving away the, the code via drop. Because if you actually have to get the code from the content creator, it would be extremely inconvenient unless they just, you know, post it every five minutes or so. I don't, it's, it's claimable by everyone, maybe. I'm not sure how it's going to work. And um, each content creator will share different codes depending on their team. So... That also would mean that in these cases, for the content creator item specifically, you would be able to get different colors. I don't know how they're going to handle that, because I would think that you could just tune into an Xbox creator and get the green tower shield skin, for example. Seems like it anyways. Not that most people would care. Again, the only thing that cannot be dyed properly are the glowing eyes here, and those are not from the content creators. So it probably won't even matter, but yeah, this is what it seems to be anyways. Uh, and then stay tuned for the full list of participating creators closer to the event. Uh, I will not be one of those. And uh, then we have some more very important questions because this is uh, the other part that's causing a bit of an upset. Um, are legacy servers eligible to participate in Trials of Eternum? No, Trials of, Trials of Eternum delivers a compelling New World Eternum launch experience for new characters from the shores to Shattered Mountain. Only standard servers across PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X and S can participate in the event. Actually, interesting that they say up to Shattered Mountain. They expect people to... I mean, maybe they do expect people to, to get up to Shattered Mountain in the third week because it says throughout the corrupted before they drift. Well, I, I don't know. But either way, uh, obviously, standard service is not going to make a lot of people happy because all legacy servers won't be able to get anything. But at the same time, it's not entirely surprising in so far that a lot of the quests will probably be low-level stuff that you can't really do or you won't really see many people doing in comparison on a legacy server. But again this will further push people away from legacy servers because there's even less of a reason for new players to start a character on legacy because you're not getting all the fancy rewards. That said, like I said, it seems like the progression uh, seems to be somewhat independent of what you're doing, as far as I can tell. And as such, you could possibly just create a new character on the on one of the standard servers 
And the skins are account wide probably because all other skins are. So you should probably still be able to claim everything by just having that character there. And I'm not sure how much you would actually need to do with that character to unlock these things, but maybe not all too much, possibly. Uh, likewise, which is interesting, um, console-only worlds are also not eligible. Uh, they only allow, again, standard, because they want um, all different platform players to progress together uh, through immersion, exploration, progression towards a common goal. So, yeah, that's um, kind of interesting because that's going to reduce the amount of players going onto the console-only servers, uh, which I think is a good thing because I think the, the standard servers in that regard are better. I'm not sure if driving the legacy players onto standard is a good idea when many of them want to stay on legacy and uh, may not be that nice while on standard, but I think disencouraging the, the console-only servers is not a bad idea. Then, in terms of how the teams will work, all players, regardless of their server, will be split into three teams, PC, PlayStation, Xbox. Uh, this is a cooperative event, so everyone will work together uh, toward completing the same challenges, even if they're on different teams. However, each team will have their own individual progress. For example, if adventurers on PC unlock a weekly reward faster than adventurers on PlayStation or Xbox, uh, the adventurers on PlayStation or Xbox are still eligible to unlock the reward uh, when all relevant challenge, uh, challenge milestones are completed. So PC will probably be last on most, to be honest, but I guess this will kind of give us a, a good insight into um, into the server split in terms of how many uh, players from different platforms will be on each server, who completes it faster. Uh, when we'll receive my unlocked weekly rewards, unlocked rewards will be distributed throughout the event after each week. And then the uh, content creator codes here are, again, independent, but it doesn't really explain the whole color system. And then obviously, if you want to get this either stalker mount, you need to pre-purchase new World of Tournament consoles or log in on PC. Uh, and you need to have Rise of the Angry Earth to actually use the skin. Um, so yeah, we've gone through that a few times. But yeah, again, a lot of controversy with this event. It's, uh, it's a bit weird how they've chosen certain things here. But you can kind of probably go around it by just creating a character and not really doing much with it at least. Uh, maybe uh, maybe you have to play it a little bit, but like not much, and you can just unlock the skins uh, on your legacy character if that's what you care about. But then again, most of these skins are very default skins with different colors, so I think for most long-term players, none of these uh, will be particularly relevant. I'm not sure. This skin, I'm, I don't necessarily recognize this skin. This is, there's a few that when I'm not quite sure if, if they're like as accessible. These ones I all know. And these ones I'm pretty sure I've all seen before as well, so not super rare or anything. That's it for this video. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and clicking the bell. And if you want to get early trading tips for the expansion, then consider supporting me on Patreon. Thanks to all of my patrons who already do exactly that, and thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.